You got a problem with too much clay in the garden. Today we're fixing it. Let's get after it. Thanks for watching the video today. I'm Diego, D-I-E-G-O, and we're talking heavy soils in the garden. What do heavy soils mean? Heavy soils usually mean I have a lot of clay and it's hard to dig through them. When I do dig through it, it's heavy, hence heavy soils. Well, what makes a heavy soil a heavy soil? It, it's all that clay. And if a bunch of clay like this is the problem, how do we fix this? Because clay is really a concentration problem. We want some clay in the soil. We just don't want a ton of clay in the soil. Because too much clay does this. It sticks in a ball. Like, why does this stick in a ball? Why does this clay ball hold its shape? It holds its shape because it's mostly clay. How could we make this ball of clay not stick together? Well, if we took half of this away and we mixed it with sand and we tried to compact it, it wouldn't hold together as well. Clay ball, sand, and just mix them together. And we start to get crumbles that come off. The clay ball doesn't want to stick together because the sand is getting in between the clay particles. If we add the sand to our clay soil, we get this effect in our soil instead of this, which is what we don't want. So we dilute out the clay. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. We're going to take a bed that has a lot of clay in it, and we're going to dilute that clay by adding sand to the bed. So from instead of that clay sticking together in a nice ball like this, we're introducing sand. So the clay is there to help us hold water and nutrients in the soil, but it's not in a heavy enough concentration to ball up and form clods like this. To add our sand to the garden today, we're using some all-purpose sand from Home Depot. $3.50 for a 50-pound bag. Not the cheapest solution. If you could get sand somewhere cheaper, then by all means get it somewhere cheaper, but this was easy for me to do this video. I'm going to be putting down a layer. I'm trying to get half an inch thick over this entire bed. That much sand, because I really want to dilute out the clay. I'm also going to be adding some biochar, which I have to the bed to integrate some organic matter into the bed to help break up the clay. The great thing about biochar is it's more stable organic matter. And that's what I'm looking for in this case. I'm looking for organic matter or something I can add to the soil that aerates the soil. Think of adding biochar to this bed, like adding perlite or vermiculite to potting soil. It adds pore space, it adds airiness, it adds water retention capacity to the soil. And I have it, I wanna get rid of it. You don't have to add the biochar if you don't have it. Don't worry, don't go buying it, make it yourself, but do add the sand. Now that the sand's been added to the soil, the next step is to turn it into the soil surface. This will require some tillage. You're going to be inverting soil layers when you do this. You have to invert soil layers to do this because you need to get the sand mixed into the soil with the clay. If you leave it on surface, it's not gonna solve your problem. So I look at amending a bed with clay or amending a bed with sand as a beginning solution. If you have heavy clay, do this at the beginning. Invert the soil now. And then over time, you won't have to invert the soil again because that sand will already be in there. If you have really loose soil, like sandy soil, you could do the same process by adding clay to your soil. So a one-time inversion is necessary, but it's a means to an end. To do that inverting, I'm just gonna be using a digging fork. And I'm gonna incorporate it as deep as I can, just in turning the soil. The one great thing about using sand in your bed versus organic matter is sand is forever. Organic matter will be consumed. It will go away over time. Sand will not. 
That doesn't mean don't add organic matter to your bed. By all means, you should. But if you want to fix heavy soils, sand is a good, easy first option. So we just go as deep as we can. The whole goal being you want to get the sand down to where the clay is. If you're not mixing the sand with the clay, there's no point in doing this. Now the sand's all been turned into the bed. The next step is just to rake the bed to shape and we'll be good to plant into it. This is not a substitution for adding organic matter to your bed. I would still add compost to your bed after you plant crops. I would also continue trying to keep a live root in the bed as long as possible. And if you do broad fork, any of that sand that you didn't get mixed down into the soil will work its way down during the broad forking action, just showing that broad forking's a great companion to some of these other methods. In terms of how hard is this, it's harder than broad forking. You can kind of hear I'm a little bit winded. Uh, it's not as hard as double digging, but there's some effort involved here. Nonetheless, it's a one-time fix. Maybe if you have really, really heavy soils, you have to do this one year and then you do it the next year. But this isn't something I'd expect you to do every year. I don't think it's needed and I don't like the inverting of the soil that it does other than for a one-time fix when you're getting your beds set up. So adding sand to dilute out the clay and soils, one way to break up those heavy soils. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.